Okay, hello everyone. So uh, we'll be continuing module nine on the lesson three on Azure AD join. This is a rather short lesson. So there are only, I think, three, five slides, including this one, to show you. So there's not much to be to be covered, actually. And thanks for someone reminding me. So in the comments of the video uh, description, I will also include a slide of each of my lessons. So you can go there and uh, click and download if you want to go over it or uh, if you want to use this for uh, your own training as well outside because this is essentially not uh, who I made those PowerPoint slide. It's the Microsoft because uh, it's part of the training program on the Microsoft Certified Trainer. They will provide all the slides for pretty much all the certification exam. So uh, it's free access for me, but I'm happy to share it as well. All right. So let's get started, and uh, we were covering only four items in this one. So device management, Azure AD Join device, hybrid AD Join device, and uh, configuring the Azure AD Join. So there are also uh, another term. So it's uh, if you not, I don't know if you guys heard about it, it's the hybrid Intune, uh, Intune hybrid. My bad. So it's Intune hybrid, and this one it uh, will be decommissioned by Microsoft. Uh, I, I forgot whether it's now or in the future, near future, I think really soon, they were going to decommission this um, uh, Intune hybrid, All right? So let's get started. So device management, right? So uh, the Azure uh, AD, so Azure Active Directory enables these uh, SSO to device apps and services from anywhere. So the uh, device including uh, your uh, the BYOD, bring your own device, empowers you know the, your end user to be productive whenever and wherever to use their own device. But the IT admins must ensure the your corporate assets properties are protected and compliance. You know those devices meet the standard for security uh, per your company's policy. So to get a device under the control of Azure AD, so you have two options. Right, the first one is uh, registering a device. The second one is joining a device. So uh, registering a device to Azure AD enables you to manage a device identity. So when a device is registered, the Azure AD device registration provides a device with an identity, same as with a user, that is used to authenticate the device when a user signed to uh, the Azure AD. So you can use the identity to enable or disable the device. And second option, joining a device. So this is an extension to registering a device. So this means it provides you with all the benefits of registering a device and in addition to this, it also changes the local state of the device. So it's changing the local state of the uh, uh, device. So it, well, it, it, this will enable the user to sign into a device using the organization you know, account or school account instead of a personal account. So the personal account here means the Microsoft account. So people may ask, like, hey, what is it to do MAM or MDM? So this, uh, to be honest, it's not really that. So MAM is protect your environment, no, no environment, your device on the application level. The MDM policy, it's on the device level. So it's more like the hardware and software. So MDM is on the hardware, like it disables the, uh, the function of the phone, right? The, uh, the phone, uh, the, the camera function of the phone. And then MAM is more like the software, like you must enter a uh, password before access a PIN number for the software, like Power BI or Word or SharePoint. So uh, this is because both of the policy you can enable on the device, which is doesn't have to be enrolled into the Intune. So that's Intune, not really what we saw here. So it's different. You have to remember, right? So the uh, a Azure AD joint device. Uh, so, uh, I think I think I missed something here. So yeah. So the registration combined with the mobile device management policy, the MDM solution, like Intune, right? Or you have third party, or uh, you know, uh, provides additional device attributes in Azure AD. So it's actually extra uh, additional attributes. So this allows you to create a conditional access rules, which will enforce the access from device to meet you know your compliance or IT policy in your organization. And uh, yeah, so the Azure AD join is designed and provide access to organization apps and resources to uh, simplify uh, sim uh, to simply the Windows deployment of work own device. So the Azure AD join has, uh, you know, the benefits listed here. So first there is a single sign on to your uh, Azure management SaaS apps and services. So users essentially don't need to authenticate again, 
right? Same as with your laptops. And the SSO functionality is available even when the user are not connected to the domain network because essentially they will take the device anywhere, right? You don't have to, you, you cannot extend your company Wi-Fi to the whole city. And the second one is the enterprise compliant roaming of the user settings across joint devices. So user uh, don't have to connect to a Microsoft account. Uh, maybe you have a Yahoo Mail or Hotmail to see the settings across devices. And the service access to Windows Store for business using their Shreddy account. So user can choose from any uh, choose from an you know, inventory of applications pre-selected by the organization. So I actually, I really love to show some of the settings on my phone, but unfortunately, I cannot get the Miro uh, apps to work. It's because I have a demo phone, because I have a, my work phone that's already enrolled in, in, into, and I cannot enroll one device into two organizations. Right? This have to you know. So. But my demo phone is, I, I, I don't know whether it's the PC's problem or my server problem, I cannot mirror it here. So I really love to show, but unfortunately it's not uh, gonna happen on this session today. All right, so uh, so what this do is uh, the store, so the company will push, not really push, will give you some of the um, authenticated in the apps that they want you to install. So we access the company portal they will have the listed apps, right? So the recent training I did for the company is they are pushing Power BI. So I introduced this to them. They happen to have this e license. So they, they can push this Power BI to all their end users. And uh, furthermore, it's the Windows Hello, support for secure and convenient access to work resource. So what is Windows Hello is Microsoft says, you don't have to remember the password, the password will remember you, right? That's Windows Hello. And the restriction of access to apps only from device meet compliance policy. So this is like the uh, what Intune does. It can do a check to whether your your phone is at the most uh, a recent update or it's at a certain, for example, iOS 11.6. Right, you must have that state to access the uh, company's app, or otherwise you have to update your phone. So this is like the on-prem. If you're a Windows Server guy, you know there's a net. A net, I think it's net framework policy, net policy framework server. So I forgot the exact name for that one, but that one is checking all the, uh, it working with the WSUS to check all your devices uh, across your company. So for example, someone connects their laptop to the uh, company network and they immediately check, okay, your your Windows is not the at this the last update. So you, we cannot let you access our company portal, like the internal portal, like. So you have to update your device or you have to install this antivirus software and you have to do so. Uh, so we can let you access the resource and work with the WSUS to uh, uh, to let you download the update and uh, essentially meet the requirements. Right, But this is some extra thing. And last one, to seamless, uh, seamlessly access your on-premise resource when the device has line of sight to your domain controller right, using Kerberos. Okay, and yeah, this is also the thing called hybrid Azure AD joint device. Oops, sorry. So if your environment has an on-premise AD footprint and you also want to benefit from the capabilities provided by the Azure AD, you can implement this hybrid AD joint devices. So uh, these are devices that are joined both to on-premise Active Directory and to your Azure Active Directory. So joint device to both the directories will allows you uh, allows your IT department to manage the work own device from a central location, and a user to sign to their devices with their uh, Active Directory work or school account. And uh, here, so what you saw here is the uh, comparison of registered AD joint and hybrid AD joint devices, right? So there's uh, you can just uh, remember this chart for short. And here, this screenshot of how you I uh, already configured this uh, Azure AD join. So uh, let me drink something first. The so user may join device to Azure AD. So as I said, first step, I select the user who can join device to Azure AD. So this setting enables you to select the user uh, to join and the default is all. So this setting is only applicable to Azure AD join on Windows 10. And the second one, so there's additional local uh, admin on the Azure AD joint device. You can select the users that are granted local admin rights to a device. 
So user uh, added here are uh, added to the device administrator role in the Azure AD. Uh, global admin in Azure AD and device owners are granted local admin rights by default. So this option is premium addition capability available for uh, the Azure AD Premium or P1, P2, and the uh, Enterprise Mobility Suite (EMS). So if you if you have E5, you have it. If you only have E3, you have to uh, uh, you have to purchase the add-on, the AADP add-on, uh, P1 or P2. Uh, the free one doesn't work. Okay, or you have the Microsoft 365. Uh, you also have this because Microsoft 365 combines combines Office 365, EMS, and Windows 10. So user may uh, register their device with the Azure AD. So you need to configure this setting to allow device to be registered with Azure AD. So if you select non, device are not uh, allowed to register. So when they are not Azure AD join or hybrid AD Azure AD join. So enrollment with uh, Microsoft Intune or the MDM for Office 365 requires the registration. If you have configured either of these services, always selected and non is uh, not available. The non option, I mean, yeah, and require the MFA to join device. So you can choose uh, whether user can uh, are required to provide a second authentication factor to join their device to Azure AD, so text, email, etc. So the default is no. So we recommend to requiring multi-factor authentication when registering a device. And before you enable the MFA to for this uh, for this service, you must ensure that MFA is configured for the user that's registered device. So uh, to configure the MFA for the user, you can do it in Azure to, on the user level, or you can do this on the uh, Office 365 uh, portal on active users. You can do that both the older or premier uh, preview admin portal. You can do that. Right. And the maximum number of devices. So this setting enables you to select the maximum number of devices that the user can have in Azure AD. If a user reaches this quota, they are not able to add additional device until one or more of the device is removed. And this device quota is counted for all the Azure AD uh, or devices that are uh, either Azure AD joined or Azure AD registered today. And the default value is 20. Uh, so uh, I think I remember something here. So it's uh, some extra third. I can tell you guys is my colleague at Microsoft tell me he accidentally looking to the company portal. So Sadia, CEO of Microsoft, has 26 devices. So maybe because he's the CEO, he has some extra code. We don't know, but yeah, uh, I couldn't imagine like if one person have 26 devices. Like, what's that like? You have how do you manage that? You because myself, I have three phones. Right, one for my work, one for my uh, testing, one for demo, and I have one a server at home where I do my. Uh, uh, testing here and have three virtual machines and uh, my company have one server as well so I have like below 10 so I don't know how can one has 26 device right so uh, yeah the so last one the user may sync settings and app data across devices so by default the settings set to none so selecting specific user or group or all to uh, to allow the user setting and apps data to sync across their Windows 10 devices. So uh, this option is the uh, premium capability, so available for uh, Ready and uh, EMS as well. So that's it. So uh, if you're interested, we can see here. So here I have on my all devices, right? A Ready device. I have uh, that's slow. I have one, right? I have one here. That's my demo phone that I mentioned. It's an iPhone. Oops, let me close this. Right, it's a version 12. It's already registered. Owner is the admin. Uh, MDM Syntune compliant. Yes, registered on uh, a month and a half ago. Almost two. Almost two. Uh, oh no, just one month. My bad. Right. Okay. And. Uh, so we click into the detail. There's all the detail of this thing, right? And uh, I think I have pushed an app for for the device. So let me go to Intune, right? Device, uh, yeah, compliant as one, right? Compliant ingress period, no, because I have only one device. Client apps. 
Huh? I didn't push it or have ah, no status. Okay. It's not this. There's some default comp with the demo tenant. So let me go to the uh... oh yeah. So this one. This is the one I actually pushed to on my device. So uh, you can see one is installed. This that that phone actually. I installed this uh, this app. You can see this that one. Okay, so this is the end of the session. It's a quick 15 minutes, and uh, just to uh, tell you guys, I will including the slide. I will convert to a uh, PDF version of all the slides into one of my uh, own trial SharePoint site, so you can click and download. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in uh, module eight because we skipped module eight, right? Because someone required. I wanted this module nine to be introduced first, right?